Everyone, hi. Bruce Moffson, LCSW, coming at you once again from Sunridge of Nevada. Today, uh, this is going to be our third of three songs, and you know we've done two before. We've done Mac DeMarco and Code of the Friend, and now we are going to do Capital Steez. Now, we are doing a little bit of a trivia contest this time, so here is going to be the question. What is something that all three of these people have in common? Please. Go through all three songs. Tell us what you think. We've already gotten several people already, you know, trying to take a chance and making some ideas and some aspirations, which is all great. We're going to take everyone that has completed this, has gotten the right answer. We'll do a drawing. We'll pick one person. And from that one person, there will be a one-on-one -on -one 30 minute session with me to talk about anything that you want to talk about. Okay, here we go. This person uh, unfortunately passed away and I'm going to go into it right now. It's Capital Steez and it's called The Song is Free the Robots. Here we go. All right, Capital Steez, just want to go over this. He died by suicide on December 24th, 2012. He had texted a few friends to say that he loved them and at 11.59 he had tweeted the end and he jumped off a building in Manhattan. Now he grew up in New York City, in, um, and when he was three years old, his father died, which I found to be very, very significant. Now, it said that when he got to be a little bit older, he was in high school, he had gone into a YouTube series called Spirit Science, which was dealing with the metaphysical and the spiritual theories that people were interested in. Fine. Now, also, his spirituality changed as well, because... It included a number of things, several of them which were Egyptian mysticism, numerology, astral projection, and most importantly, the Indian chakra system. He considered himself to be one of the indigo children, who people were, that was a new age science theory talking about inherent intuition, spiritually gifted, and people that would rebel against authority, children. And he believed he was a being of a higher dimension. Steez was infatuated with the number 47, which when what it meant spiritually. And the number 47 was the perfect expression of balance in the world, representing the tension between the heart and the brain, the fourth and the seventh chakra. And there's other instances of how 47 is used in various ways throughout history. Okay. I want to go into the song right now and... I just want to say I had to listen to this song multiple times and really understand him on a different level because really the song moved me a great deal. The song is called Free the Robot. And as you guys know, what I do is I read the lyrics that I think are meaningful to me and I break them down clinically. So here we go. Free the robots. And it goes off like this. There's a hook and it goes, Dear Diary, what a day it's been. Dear Diary, it's been just like a dream. This, and I said, I recognize that song. I recognize that snatch of song. That came from a song from the, a band called the Moody Blues from 1969. So already it tells me this guy could sample, and he listened to a huge variety of music. Then it goes like this. Um, we should see the signs, but we Stevie blind. No disrespect to the man with the legend, but I'm seeing, uh, I'm, you know, no, there's a legend, but I'm sick and tired of asking my brethren if it all ends in 2011. Uh, would God come through or would he actually forget us? Because apocalypse is getting closer. Now, I was wondering about the 2011 significance, and I said, hmm, this sounds familiar to me. And guess what? In 2011, there was a movement that believed that the earth was going to come to an end. It was gonna, you were going to get the, end, the beginning of the answers in May, and the world would end five, roughly five months later in October. Okay, now... Why did people believe this? It came down for two reasons. It came down from Genesis, where God had said to Noah, seven days from now I will send rain on the earth, 40 days and 40 nights. Now, when God was referring to seven days, he meant both seven days and 7,000 years, because what people have inferred is one day on creation was equal to 1,000 years, and 1,000 years is one day. This author believed that the floods occurred in 4990 BC before Christ. 7,000 years later, bing, 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 2011. There was another big thing that people really got into. It was the significance of the days between the crucifixion and May 2011. There were 722,500 days between the dates. 
it's a significant number because it's composed of significant numbers, 5 times 10 times 17 times 5 times 10 times 17. 5 singles redemption, 10 signifies completion, and 17 signifies heaven. The numbers represent the days of redemption. So, and they're, they're doubled for added significance, the factors. Okay, who was into this? You'd be surprised. There was a radio host from American Christian Radio called Harold Camping, and he believed the rapture and the judgment day would take place in May and the end of the world five months later, on October 21st, 2011. He was head of the Family Radio Christian Network, a massive, at that time, Christian broadcasting, you know, empire, so to speak. Who would take this stuff seriously? Because people around the world were laughing at this, joking about this. The media, of course, picked up on this. It was huge at the time, like on Google, number two message to type in, end of the world, Harold Camping. And guess what? Thousands did. Thousands did around the world. Hundreds of millions of dollars were spent either promoting it or debunking it or people pouring their life savings into preparing for the end of the world. And you know why? Because he seemed to have all the answers. It made it simple. And of course, what happens is, guess what? As of today, we're still here. Camping died in 2013, and in 2018, Family Radio no longer offered any programs involving Harold Camping. Done. I see this in counseling so many times where people will say to me, Bruce, I, I believe in this stuff now. I believe in this. I believe in that. I believe in drugs. I believe in, oh, ecstasy puts me in a higher plane, mushrooms. Oh, I take this kind of sativa. Whew. It's my anxiety is gone. My depression has gone. Oh, you know, I'm following this guy. He telling me to do this, juicing, cleansing, fasting. If I pray, if I sleep a certain way, if I give money, if I change my lifestyle, my diet, you know what the problem is? You're not changing yourself. You're changing for a fad. You're changing for an idea. You know, it's nothing wrong with losing weight or becoming more spiritual, but there's nobody grounding you. You don't have somebody holding your hand and telling you, hey, let's put things in perspective. I mean, it's amazing reading stories of people that, that spent their life savings believing this and promoting this and saying, oh, it, it, he has the answers. Well, he didn't have the answers. What I want to go on next to this is he does this. He goes, but they're more focused on our little youth sipping soda F blank the sugar act, blank people out pushing crack, and I lost my father figure because of that. At that time in New York City, they put together a sugar tax. They worried about kids' teeth corroding and high diabetes and, you know, hypertension. So let's get rid of the sugar. You know, if you're going to buy a bottle of soda, it's going to cost you an extra 10 cents to, you know, fight obesity, so to speak, which is a huge issue in America even more today. I can understand why he felt this way. It's like the world's coming to an end and you're worried about an extra bottle of Dr. Pepper. <laughs> of course it's crazy. Of course you're going to be like this because he's here. He's here. He's into the chakras. He's into the end of the world. He's preparing. He's studying. And people are saying like, man, I had to pay an extra 15 cents for my big gulp at 7-Eleven. Of course you're going to get confused. It makes total sense to me. He was focused on the larger issues that are plaguing people. He had that yin-yang in him. He's here. He's like, there's, there's a line by Jimi Hendrix. Excuse me while I kiss the sky. Do, 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 do. Great line. Like, you're here. You're here. And people are complaining about their big gulp with their 7-Eleven Slurpee with their, you know, 64 ounces costing an extra 10 cents. <laughs> it's cuckoo. You know, from Judaism, they said the greatest prophet of all time was Moses. Why? Because he was the only person that could be that was alive that God would speak to directly. Every prophet after Moses was spoken to through a cloud. When you're on that kind of level, you know, you go back to your tent at night, and your wife's complaining about the camels, you know, making a mess, or the next door neighbors talk too loud with their tent flap open, where 
how quick are they going to get to Israel and the sand's really hurting your feet and there's any moisturizer around, you're like, who cares? It's so stupid. It's so trivial. I just talked to God today for two hours about the future of the Jewish people till the Messiah comes, and you're worried about moisturizer because the dry you know, air in the desert's hurting your, your cuticles. Who cares? You get removed, but you got to be grounded at the same time. And here's the thing here. He was saying... He's looking at the chakras. He's looking for some kind of answers, the four and the seven, the apocalypse, you know, the crucifixion, the resurrection. When's it going to happen? The Genesis talk. One day is 1,000 years. And he's looking at this. He's here, and he's seeing his in his neighborhood, the, the gunfire never stops. He's living in a rough neighborhood. There was an article I pulled where it talked about they took 101 pairs of shoes this summer from a week of shootings in New York City. 101. And they put everyone's pair of shoes on like steps, I think, I believe, of City Hall to illustrate how insane it is. 101 shootings in one week throughout the city. The victims, many of them, were, you know, minorities. Crazy. And he was talking about this in his song. And... It's just amazing to me that he goes like this. He goes, screw the sugar act. Guys are out pushing crack. And I lost my father figure because of that. To me, he's alluding to some type of father figure that appears to be drug related. You know, I lost my father figure and it was drug related because of that. Then he goes like this. He goes into the hook. Dear diary, what a day it's been. Dear diary, it's been like that. That's the dream. Fine. Then he goes with this. He goes, at night I can't sleep. I toss and turn. Hmm, where's that from? That came from the Ghetto Boys, okay? From their song, Mind Playing Tricks on Me, that was a huge song back in the day. I went to Sam. I said, I've heard that line before. I heard that voice before. Sure enough, I spoke to my producer. Yep, boom, boom, boom. Checked it out. Why does he put that line? It's interesting because you notice the next four lines. I can't sleep. I... I, I can't sleep, I toss and I turn. It's been like a dream. At night I can't sleep, I toss and turn. It's been just like a dream. Yeah, because he's in a daze. If you notice from the song, he's walking around like he separates himself into two because he's not relaxed. It's like this with the, with the, with the media. You get a little cuckoo and you start like not knowing what's real and what's not real. And he's doing that really, really beautifully. But then what starts to happen is he's dreaming because he's not sleeping. He's not relaxed. He's not in REM state. So what's happening is the music starts to come in. That synthesizer starts to play. And it's to prepare you for the anger and frustration that he's feeling with his life and what he sees around him. I can't get closer to God. I can't get closer to Nirvana. And no one wants to talk about the carnage in the streets. All they want to talk about is man, it's a little bit more money for my Diet Coke. You know, it's a bit more money for my, my Sprite. Like, uh, no wonder you can't sleep. No wonder you're restless. No wonder you don't dream. You're not dreaming effectively because all you're getting is image after image that's crashing into you. So then it goes like this. The next half of the song, it's interesting to me. I kind of broke it all down. I took all the lines because to me, it's a, it's a cry for anger. It's a cry for frustration, and that synthesizer starts to get louder. and It's almost like it's like his blood's pulsating. His heartbeat is racing. His blood pressure is soaring that second half of the song. So can I live, or is my brother trying to gun me down? It gets louder at that point. Scuffle a couple of rounds till we hear the thunder sound. No lighting, clash of titans, and after the violence, a moment of silence. Still going on. 2011, boom. You still have... The killing and the carnage going on today. Murders are up. Acts of violence are up. We're supposed to be a better people, more aware, more self-aware. All we need to be more self-aware is how to kill each other better. So what's changed? He called that. He saw that. Because I want mine the fast way. And it starts getting faster. The synthesizer is getting faster. The ski mask way, looking for a fast pay. And here's, I like these really, really two lines. 
And instead of sticking up for each other, we're picking up guns and sticking up our brothers. We're literally killing ourselves instead of looking out for each other. So what have we accomplished? Where, how are we going forward if we can't look out for each other and all we're doing is gunning each other down? It's a cry to wake up, wake up. That's what he's really saying to me is wake up, be heard, be heard in an effective way. People are wasting their time and life by senseless violence and hate. So he goes like this, next part. He goes, blank them all, I'm coming through raging and I won't stop till Reagan is caged in. This is how he's feeling. He's angry. He is raging. And he uses the music beautifully to wear it like a cloak, a cloak of anger, a cloak of despair, a cloak of, dis of frustration. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. And mom tells me I should let the Lord handle it. Oh, you see that yin-yang again. Let God handle it. Mom's telling me let God handle it, but he's not doing a very good job. Maybe the world is going to come to an end. Maybe it's getting so chaotic out there. Maybe this is my next step. Maybe my thought of maybe it's time for me to go early, to get ready for the rapture, to get ready for the cleansing. Hey, thousands of people around the world were taking this very, very seriously. It wasn't just like one person where like one person's a village idiot. In one village, I think 3,000, Vietnam, 3,000 people showed up to a field believing this was going to happen. Now the music is louder. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, whoever the producer was, great job. The arm of the law is trying to manhandle us, a man's world but a white man's planet. And the doors are slowly closing while we're falling through the cracks of it. Beautiful lines. It's a shame that flipping crack will be the best alternative if you don't make it rapping. Crack, rapping. It's even louder. Because what he's really saying is interesting to me. Is this all the options that we have? That's it? it drugs? Rapping. Uh, what's in between? Like, that's it? That's all we can do? I do, this as, I do this in therapy. When I say to people, I'm reading my own line, I do this in therapy. But I say this to people, what dreams do you have? What are your goals? What do you want to be? You want to get away from this stupidity, this stupid life that you're living. So what life do you want? What dreams do you have? Does anyone ever tell you you can have a dream, that you're entitled to a dream? I've had so many kids tell me, Bruce, if I hit 21, that's a fantasy in itself. I'm not getting out of here. I'm, I'm, I'm locked in. I don't have a dream. I have a dream. I'm lucky if I don't get molested this weekend. That's where I'm, that's where I'm living from. And you leave there, you walk out of these homes, it's, it's, it's soul crushing. That that's how people think and live. Okay? And he goes, those crack houses and trap houses are trapping us in. And again, we're going to remain stagnant. Oh, boy. I can't relate to trap and crack houses, but I can relate to my mother having a very difficult marriage because my father wanted nothing out of life. And she said, Bruce, it's like living in the twilight zone here. Nothing changes. It's stagnant. So his words struck me in a different way. And that's, that's an accomplishment of a very talented artist, that different people can get different things out of it. I saw my mother in those two lines. I really did. And then he goes like this. And in the end, we we're going to remain stagnant. I ain't having it. He's bitter and he's spitting out the words. He's not even like saying them. He's not saying them. He's, it's... Spit, I ain't having it. Bitter, he's frustrated. And the music washes over you. It's just like, get out, get out. See life for yourself. Create your own identity. Create your own reality. And not one that the media has presented for us. And then, of course, he gets up. He walks out. He's like, he's blinded by the light. Dear diary, what a day it's been. Dear diary. So many great metaphors here. We get so used to people telling us what to think. I hate this one. I like this one. Vote for him. Vote for him. But you don't know this for yourself. That's why I tell people, don't listen to rumors. Don't listen to gossip. Don't listen to stupidity. See it for yourself. Experience it for yourself. Only way you're going to grow. Now, there was a comment from Joey Badass. His 
collaborator, main collaborator, no one could understand him because he was talking and moving into new things so fast, just rapid fire. He was only 19. These guys were basically about 16. And he was a teacher and a mentor. The problem was he didn't have someone to be his mentor to look out for him. He lost his father figure. He said that. There was no one holding him down. In hindsight, you can see then why he didn't fit the mold, quote, quote, of what rap was supposed to be. No girls, no guns, cars bling. He was saying, who cares? You sit in front of the TV, it consumes you in a way you don't even realize what's even happening. Okay? And you think events halfway around the world won't affect you. <laughs> Indirectly, they do because what's going on outside our world is a battle zone too. On our block, around the corner, in our schoolyards, people are getting killed and slaughtered. 101 pairs of shoes. Okay? It's down the block. This song was a gut punch to wake up because he saw the drug world from a different level, a different understanding. You need a father slash mentor to show you around, show you the world, someone to look out for you, like as a guide, so you don't get so caught up in the spiritual, but you also see the physical. I was in Israel a million years ago. I was uh, 17, 18 years old. I remember two buddies of mine went to go to this city in Israel, which were known for like mystics and holy rabbis, blah, blah, blah. I wasn't really interested in going because we had to take a bus to get there. It would have been a whole day kind of thing. And I wasn't really going to go, but a rabbi overheard the conversation. These guys trying to talk me into it. And he said, hey, Brucey, do me a favor. Go with them. These guys right now, they got their head in the clouds. You got your feet on the ground. I went. Look out for my friends. because they were, And actually, one guy was going to drop some serious coin on some potion. Like I said, no, just wait. And he didn't spend the money. It was going to get taken. I look out for people because you start searching and looking for things. You know, I could have gone with that number 47 like 18 different ways. I could have gone with the two different things about the rapture and Genesis, another 40 different ways. Yet you can, you can find anywhere you look, but you got to also deal with the here and now. And I want to clarify this. How many times have I heard this in songs? How I've lost my mind. Lost in your mind, lost in your mind. It's a favorite lyric. It can take you nowhere. That's the problem. When you're in your mind and you're lost, it takes you to a destination that's not on the map. The reality is he was different. He saw things on a different level. Guess what, people? When you're brilliant, when you're a thinker, when you're a doer, you're like that. Okay? You get into that super fast mode, and others are just like, like, dun, 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 dun. I get that feeling for myself sometimes in therapy. I see things like ahead of the curve. He saw things ahead of the curve too. Brilliant people are like that. We get that way. You got to learn how to like, like I was just talking about this. I, I can't do a curve at 150. I got to go to curve at 110 like everyone else because I got a family I got to provide for. I got kids I got to provide for. I got to pay my taxes. I got to pay my mortgage. Yeah, I could dream. That's why I enjoy doing these videos so much for you guys. It's not work. It's really a labor of love. But at the same time, I got to be practical. I got to go have a meeting at work tomorrow. I got to be serious about things, blah, 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 blah. That I dress the right way. I can't like mystify myself. Got to be real. And you can't get lost in space with drugs or alcohol or people that are not really there for you. That's a theme I see over and over again. Okay. For those of you, you who are out there watching this video and struggling with this, trying to be understood, if you're a nerd or if you're different, or like a topic that you feel no one cares about, we can't relate to, don't despair, don't drift off, but find someone safe and normal, okay, that feels like you do and can take you by the hand and take you to a place of comfort, of safety, of inclusion, that you feel good about yourself and who you are, and you find like-minded people. That makes you feel validated, wanted, and part of a normal environment. Okay, don't give up hope. You just haven't found the right group yet. You get that by age and experience. I'm a lot smarter than I was when I was 57, than I was 17, 40 years ago. I've learned a couple of tricks along the way. For someone young, it's hard. It was hard for him. Of course it was hard for him. I got to put the brakes on, but at that time, he was revving. He was in the red zone. That's what the, that really was the problem with his music. So creative, so ahead of his time. 
he was thinking on such a different level. I would have said to him, hey, how are you doing? Please don't do drugs. Please don't do alcohol. Please don't get yourself off a hook that you can't disengage from. Let me help you. Let me give you some foundation. Let me give you some guidance. We all need it. Music was great. I wish he was still alive. You would have put out some incredible music, some incredible tunes. It's sad. His death, in its own way, really bothered me. And I had to really, like, think about this music a lot. But for all of you out there, don't give up hope. Stay focused. Nothing self-destructive. Find someone that can guide you and go forward in a positive way. Thank you for watching. Bruce Muffs and LCSW, Sunridge of Nevada.